Today we're going to talk about my three favorite builds to play so far in Last Epoch. First we're going to start out with the Warpath Smite Void Knight, which utilizes the Void Pathway and the Proking Smite Pathway on Warpath, and the Void Conversion for Smite in the Void Knight tree to do a heavy amount of Void Spell damage. We also splash into the Paladin tree to get Sigils of Hope because it's a pretty decent source of extra damage, especially once you do the Fire to Void conversion on it. You do lose the, the health regen, so if you're dying a lot, if you feel that health regen would help, you can skip the Void conversion and put your points more focused into the health regen aspect of Sigils of Hope instead of the damage aspect. We use Void Cleave as our traversal skill with the Gravity's Edge passive, which gives it a, a bunch of distance. And then we go down the line for Ravaging Aura, which is actually going to be our main source of clear for the build. And we use Anomaly with the Time Bubble setup and Immediacy so that we can shred the void resistance of everything nearby us as well as giving ourselves a few damage buffs like Attack Speed and, and Crit Chance. The main focus of this build is uh, Ravaging Aura and Smite. We're going to gear mostly for Spell Void Damage and Void Damage in general as well as Crit Chance. And the gameplay loop is essentially when you're running through your monolith, you just void cleave into enemies, proc your ravaging aura, and it should do enough damage to kill anything as you walk through it. And you just void cleave enough to keep the ravaging aura up. And whenever you get to an elite, you void cleave onto the elite to get your ravaging aura up. You hit anomaly to shred their void res, and then you just start spinning warpath on them in order to proc your smite every second. I like this build a lot because I've always enjoyed the playstyle of spin to win builds quite a bit. And I also enjoy the feeling of just kind of slicing through entire packs of mobs with the ravaging aura, just melting them. But it also is pretty satisfying when you get to an elite or a boss and you're spinning and your smites are coming down on them and just doing a ton of damage. It's a very satisfying build. And I like the aesthetic as well. Purple's my favorite color, especially a nice dark purple like what is used to uh, represent the void in this game. So seeing all the cool purple colors all over the place, is, it, it makes it a little more uh, visually satisfying for me. And the echo mechanic that the Void Knight has in general is pretty cool. And it interacts quite well with this build because when your warpath echoes and when you have the little spinning echo on the ground stationary that can proc smite separately from your main cooldown so you can have multiple smites proccing on the same target when you get echo procs so it's it's very powerful for killing bosses which is why in the passive tree we get any of the uh increased chance to echo nodes that we can if you're thinking about playing Sentinel and you like the sound of Void Knight, this is definitely a build I would recommend, especially for uh, if you're new to the game, and especially if you have some sort of uh, disability or accessibility issue where you can really only use a mouse. This build is perfect for that because it doesn't take much more than moving around and holding down your Warpath button every once in a while. Then the next build we're gonna talk about is gonna be the Shadow Daggers Blade Dancer build, which is a build by McFluffin on Max Roll. I don't know if he was the first one to create this build, but he's his guide is the one that I found it from, and it's a pretty fun build. I'll link the guide down in the description so you can check it out. His guide is very detailed, just like all of the build guides on Max Roll. So I definitely recommend if you're interested in this build to try it out there. The way it works essentially is it's built around Shadow Daggers, which is a debuff that various abilities that the Blade Dancer has can apply to an enemy. When it stacks up to four, it does an instant amount of physical damage. And so you leverage Shadow Cascade applying, you leverage Shadow Cascade applying Shadow Daggers and as the Umbral Blades, Umbral Remnant, and Lasting Presence build to apply more Shadow Daggers. So you leverage a combination of Umbral Blades, Shift, and Shadow Cascade to apply as many Shadow Daggers as possible to a target and just do a ton of damage in a very short amount of time. It's also a very fast, fluid playstyle. You're dashing all over the place. You have multiple movement abilities. Everything's very fast. You're immune during your shift, so you feel very tanky. You're, you're very tanky when you're inside your smoke bomb, as well as you 
it making you do a lot of damage and it all comes together to make a very satisfying build in my opinion that you you just feel invulnerable and you feel like a killing machine the general gameplay loop is when you're running through your monolith you're just shifting into packs of enemies and generally the two shadow cascades that you proc from shifting will be enough to kill most trash mobs and when you get to an elite you hit synchronized strike most of the time your synchronized strike by itself will kill the elite but if it's still alive you can either hit shift throw out a ton of shadow cascades from all of your shadows created by synchronized strike or you can also throw a bunch of umbral blades from your shadows as well and then anytime you get to something like a boss that's taking a while to kill you want to drop your smoke bomb on them so that you can build up your shadow blades buff that makes you do a ton of damage smoke bomb also stacks shadow daggers on the target very quickly so you put down smoke bomb you stand in the smoke bomb you throw down your three umbral blades on the ground and then you just do your synchronized strike into shift combo until you run out of ammo. And then you just run in circles while your shadow daggers build up from your other abilities and you shift every once in a while because the mana cost for shift is pretty low until you have a decent mana pool built up again and then you can start doing your synchronized strike shift combination again. And generally speaking, that does a ton of damage and will kill most bosses pretty quickly. I like this build a lot. It's the first character I got to the monolith. I enjoyed playing it quite a bit and I definitely recommend it. And again, like I said, uh, I'll link the build guide that McFluffin made for it and shout out to him for making such an awesome build over on Maxroll. And then the third and final build that I want to talk about today is my personal favorite that I've played so far, which is a pure minion fire necromancer. I, uh, I have recently discovered my love for minion builds in ARPGs, uh, in particular playing on Diablo 4. I enjoyed the minion based builds for the necromancer on there quite a bit. And so I wanted to give it a try in Last Epoch, and I it took a bunch of tinkering around to figure out a way that makes it work where you you are like purely minion based you don't do anything yourself except for using transplant for mobility and i this seems pretty solid i like it a lot it's fire based you you use all of the passives that convert your minions to doing fire damage you run skeletons with the fire arrows making it so that you can only summon archers so you only have your archers shooting fire arrows you run skeletal mage with the arc mage and pyromancer nodes as well as the mortar node so that you're dishing out as much fire damage from that minion as possible you run the golem with the pyre golem and the twinned golems nodes so that you have two fire golems putting out their fire auras pretty much at all times that does a lot of damage they tend to be what clears out the trash mobs in the monolith most of the time because i'll transplant onto a group of enemies the boots buff that i have that brings uh, minions with me will usually bring at least one golem and the golem will immediately slam do its slam attack on the group and then start its fire aura and that'll usually wipe things out and then the last minion ability i'm running is the wraiths we're doing the flame wraiths with the twin spirits so that we have permanent wraiths instead of having to summon them constantly. And then we leverage into the crit chance nodes. And then the last skill is transplant. And I wasn't entirely sure what to go with on transplant. Um, if you want to have a little bit more active gameplay, you can replace transplant with volatile zombies uh, and go for all of the fire damage based stuff. But I preferred to have the mobility of transplant because I really like combining it with that experimental prefix that you can get on boots that teleports minions with you when you use a traversal skill. I like that a lot. So it made me want to leverage into transplant some. So I went with as little cooldown as possible on it. And then I went into the bone armor nodes and I went into the haste and frenzy node. And then I went into the bone minion nodes so that I'm at least getting like some buffs and a couple more minions out of using transplants so that it's at least contributing somewhat to the damage of the build, even if it's not contributing as much as another ability might have. If your damage does feel low, you that's another point in time where you could you could swap out transplant for volatile zombies is what I remember recommend you could also if you want to have a more active play style but want to keep transplant 
you could swap out of twin spirits on summon wraith and you could use the aberrant call two-handed unique staff instead of a wand and shield and that lets you spawn up to 12 depending on how the item rolls additional wraiths and then you could also try and take some of the nodes in the wraith tree that gets you increased max rates as well and then the wraith ability can be the ability that you spam to make the game play a little more active so you just spam summoning as many wraiths as your mana pool allows and they just go out and kill things until they die since the default style of wraith drains its health uh passively I do really like the aesthetic of having like a giant fiery army following me everywhere and just shredding everything that they set their eyes on. It's also pretty enjoyable to be able to just run past mobs and you have your giant army running behind you and they just murder everything in their path. It's a very satisfying build and it looks really cool too. And those are my three favorite builds. I uh, I like those three a lot. Those are the ones I played the most. I haven't gotten any other builds up to, I haven't gotten any other builds past the campaign yet. So I didn't really want to talk on any of the other builds just yet, but I enjoy these ones a lot. The Necromancer is definitely my favorite so far. I really enjoy minion builds. Um, and going forward, I'm gonna do a video on what I plan to play as my build when the when the game releases next week. Right now I'm thinking about trying to put together a warlock build, but it's kind of hard to put a, put together a build for a class that I can't even play yet, but I am interested in that class quite a bit. So I'm taking a look at that, but uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.